TMD examination. Where patients require a large number of restorations, we advise screening for underlying TMD as described in the book. We are going to show a more complete examination needed for patients, like this young woman, reporting pain and jaw problems. It is sometimes more convenient to arrange a further appointment to record a detailed history, examination and diagnosis. At her next visit, to save time, the patient is given the questionnaire to record pain intensity, general musculoskeletal problems and parafunctional habits. You can also screen for serious disorders, especially those of neurological or psychological origin. Where the patient indicates there are problems, you can ask about these in more detail. With TMD, it is useful to know whether the muscles, joints or both are affected. To help locate the origin of the pain, ask the patient to map out areas of discomfort. If the patient finds this difficult, you can palpate the TMJ and muscles to determine the origin of tenderness. In order to standardise the amount of force applied during palpation, practice using kitchen scales to give a reading of one kilogram and for sensitive areas described shortly, half a kilogram. Palpate the TMJs using half a kilogram. Here the right joint is tender laterally, but there is no tenderness from within the ear canals. Now feel for joint sounds such as clicking and crepitus during movement. Repeat opening and closing three times to ensure consistency and eliminate false findings. Then repeat jaw movements to the left and right three times and forwards three times. There is a slight click of the right TMJ during two of the protrusive movements. Now palpate the muscles. Start with the neck as trigger points in the neck can refer pain to the head and jaws. Four areas are palpated. Firstly, sternomastoid. Secondly, the posterior intrinsic neck muscles. Thirdly, trapezius right up to its skull attachment. And finally, the shoulder muscles. Next palpate the masticatory muscles. There are eight sites extra orally and two intraorally. Start with temporalis, which is divided into anterior, middle, and posterior regions. Ask the patient to clench lightly to show the muscle boundary and then to indicate where palpation is painful. Palpate the three regions using one kilogram. Here, only the right anterior temporalis is uncomfortable. Next, palpate masseter over its origin, body, and insertion. Again, light clenching may be helpful to identify the muscle boundary. Here, both the body and insertion of right masseter are tender. Complete the extraoral palpation beneath the mandible and behind it. These areas are naturally more sensitive, so use half a kilogram. Now palpate the two intraoral sites using half a kilogram. Firstly, using your little or index finger over the lateral pterygoid region. This is up in the buccal sulcus behind the maxillary tuberosity. This is where you need to position your finger. Next, palpate the temporalis insertion just above where you place your thumb when giving an inferior dental block. Here the muscle is quite tender. This is where temporalis inserts into the coronoid process. We are interested in recording both the quality and quantity of jaw movement. A quick way of checking for limitation is to use the patient's fingers. Normal opening is about three fingers width, but it's better to use a ruler. Before measuring, check on opening and closing for any deviations to the left or right. Gently retract the lip to see the lower midline. Again, repeat movements three times to ensure consistency. Now measure opening with a ruler, noting the reference teeth. And now just open slowly, a bit wider, a bit wider. Remember to add the overbite, in this case four millimetres. 
Always ask the patient, open as far as you can comfortably, and open as far as you can even though it hurts. Record the measurements and any areas of discomfort. If opening is limited, see if gentle pressure will encourage it further. You will find the thresholds of limitation detailed in Chapter 7. Finally, measure mandibular excursions. Hold the ruler above the lower midline and ask the patient to slightly separate their teeth and move the lower jaw to the left and then to the right. Note any limited movements less than 7 millimeters. Measure protrusion by first recording the horizontal overlap, 3 millimeters, and then adding this to the amount protruded beyond the upper incisor, 6 millimeters in all. In summary, our patient has pain over the right TMJ, a slight protrusive click, four sites of masticatory muscle tenderness, and slight limitation of protrusion. Return to Chapter 7 to interpret these findings and come to a diagnosis.